What is going on? Welcome to Rue's Room, where we get into the nitty gritty of the artists and creatives in the Australian scene. I am Rue, and today we are joined by Fortune. He is a 20-year-old, 21-year-old hip-hop artist from Wollongong. Uh, his latest releases, Zoo and Pretty Game with Tiffany, are out now. Fortune, how are you doing? Like, for real, for real, how are you doing? I'm good, brother, yourself? Yeah, I'm doing, good. Well. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, um, so as of when this episode drops, like I mentioned, um, Zoo and Pretty Game with Tiffany are out. For mm -hmm. those who haven't heard the songs yet, yeah. um, make sure you firstly go check it out. And yes. two, um, what is the best time and place, maybe even location, to mm -hmm. listen to them for the first time? I think at Zoo, you got to be in the car, like with all your mates, like in the car with your mates, full volume, like speeding on the road type thing. Mm -hmm. Pretty game, more like by yourself, watch the video, you know what I mean? Like sit there, listen to the story, but yeah. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. I, I like to ask that question because, um, you know, sometimes when you listen to a song the first time, the way you are really matters mm. and yeah, with the sonic listening experience. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so as we were mentioning, uh, as we just jumped on the call, um, <laughs> we... It, we've met like a couple times. I think in my notes, I literally wrote, you know, we kind of met around, but last time I ran into you was at the Campbelltown Art Center. I think mm -hmm. it was, I'm not sure if it was an event for Conscious, but. Yeah, it was for Conscious. Like, oh, I don't know. I think it was. Maybe, maybe not. I know that Conscious was involved, obviously, because mm -hmm. I was performed a quick set um, through Conscious, me and Annalise. Um, mm -hmm. And then I remember you jumping on stage when there was a, a little bit more of like a freestyle section. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do remember us. I don't think we met then, but uh, maybe we met at, like we like you mentioned as well, um, there was a, it was Bodega you said? Bodega, yeah. Bodega. But I've always like followed you on Instagram when before your old account got banned. Like I always had you on Insta. Yeah, and same. And same. So yeah. we've known each other through the socials. We just had, hadn't really properly had conversations. And, you yeah. know, again, ran into each other here and there. So, you know, it's a pleasure to, you know, finally have a chance to chop it up, get Thank to you, know, do a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, so um, as I mentioned at the top, you know, we kind of get into the nitty gritty. I am, you know, I like to get to know an artist. Now. You know, I want the audience to also get to know you a bit more rather than... Yeah. You know, the typical cliche questions that you mm -hmm. get in the interview. Yes, thanks. Um, so my first question to you is, what percentage of yourself do you think your inner circle really knows about you? Uh, I reckon like 70%. Mm. Okay, okay. Solid amount. Yeah, probably like 70% because like I'm only very open with like a couple people, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. And... How much of that 70% do you think you've shared in your music so far? Oh, I've shared a lot. I probably shared the whole 70% in my music. Mm. Okay. I mean, but like, yeah, I probably share. I speak about a lot of things in my music, but like I won't go into my main bag. Oh yeah, this, this, and this, you know what I mean? I'll just put in the music. No, for sure. For sure. Um, And um, do you feel like that? Well, you said 100% of the, of the 70%. Um, do you have anything in the vault that you're still like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm keen to get off my chest that, you know, oh, like, even more, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, heaps, bro. Like, I've been working on heaps of, like, more, like, radio-type music. Not, like, rate, like, you know what I mean? Like, pop type of tracks. More, like, mainstream type of music. For sure. For sure. No, I just get Just trying you. to try, try different things besides just melodic rap and just rapping, you know what I mean? Because, like, at the end of the day, I don't want to be known as just Fortune the Rapper. Like, I want to be Fortune the Artist, you know? Yeah, 100%. 100%. And, um... You know, again, it's good to be well-rounded as an artist, mm -hmm. especially in these uh, this current climate. You know, you don't want to be boxed in too quickly because then yeah, you know, people typecast you or That's you know it. that type of stuff. So yeah, yeah smart. smart. Well, hopefully through this uh, main section, we get to know a little bit more of that seventy percent or that hundred percent, however you uh, want to look at it. So I have asked Fortune to do a little bit of homework, maybe gather some items. We're going to take it back to primary school days, and. Yeah. If we don't have uh, an item to go along with it, at least we'll have a dope story to go along uh, with these questions. So let's get into it. Uh, my first question to you is, what is something that represents who you are as a person? Well, it's not really like something, but it's more like 
my parents and God. So like my parents, you know, sacrificing dad's doing fly in, fly out like his whole life just to have me like living here in Australia, especially living here in Wollongong and God for putting me on the path that I'm on right now. For sure. For sure. Um, what is, what's your background? I'm Nepalese in uh, New Caledonia, but like New Caledonia got invaded by France. So like kind of French type thing. Like, no, for sure. For sure. And, um, uh, do you feel like obviously identity is such a, a big thing with a lot of artists? I know uh, I'm South African myself. Yeah. So it's the Cape Town uh, yeah. Cape in the background. Um, and, you know, representing where I'm from is, you know, pretty big to me, at least in my regular life. So how much is um, representing your, you know, those two sides of yourself big in your music or even just how you present yourself well, bro, like, at the start, like, growing up, I was really embarrassed to be, like, Asian, you know what I mean? Like, I never used to tell people I was Asian. I always just did, like, the, the French side. But, like, now, like, growing up, it's, like, culture so, like, culture sick, you know what I mean? Like, I'm less scared. Like, I don't really care if people know. I'm proud. I'm proud of it. For sure. For sure. For sure. And um, were you born here? Were you, did you move here? Yeah. I was born here, but both my parents weren't born here. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. Um, Yeah, nice. Nice. Um, and then you said um, your faith in God. Um, yeah. I too am Christian, I assume. Yeah. 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 Amen, um, yeah. Uh, any specific denomination or, you know, yeah. Well, bro, like I've never, the whole, the whole Jesus Christ thing and God, that was only this year that I, that, mm. I, that I turned to God. So it's, it's all, it's all new to me. Like never read the Bible, haven't been to church, but you know, you, you pray things happen and like, it makes you believe, you know? Of course. Of course. Mm. You know, um, you know. There, there's a reason why we call it a come to Jesus moment or, you know, yeah. um, when certain things happen, you know, yeah, uh, turn to religion, whether it's Christianity or, you know, any other, whatever else they believe in. Um, mm. But yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. I was just curious. I was just curious. Yeah, no, no, of course. <laughs> um, all right. Let's keep moving. Number two, what's your favorite sentimental gift that you have received from someone? Well, 2022, um, my girlfriend at the time for my birthday, she surprised me with the studio session at Beast of Chef. Like, so mm -hmm. I've always been rapping for fun, like, and I got band lab around this time and I would send her like band lab shit and be like, oh, what you think, this and that. And then for my birthday, she surprised me with the session, my first session. So I went to the studio the month after that. And like, since then, like, it was always there, you know what I mean? So that's, that's it's sentiment, like made my career type thing. For sure. For sure. And, you know, that's, that's so interesting that, you know, it's, it's, that one that gift that's like okay it's dope in the moment but now yeah change and change my whole life yeah yeah like transition uh, my whole life different yeah for sure for sure and now um chef and barry are your two who you know you're always locked in with yeah um you know now you have this community of mm. artists they also link with yeah such exactly and nick marcus's and yeah etc et so um yeah how would you um, say that Chef and Barry have played a part in the development of your artist. Oh, ma massive, like massive. So like well, the first time I ever went and made a song, like I just had a basically just one verse. Like I didn't know how to write a hook. I didn't know like anything. I went in there. They showed me how to like do a hook, harmonies, ad libs. Like I was still all new to that. Like they taught, they basically, they taught me, they taught me basically everything. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. I'm just going there all the time. Like it was like it was like going to training for sport. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know ex I know exactly what you mean. And you know, even myself when I worked on uh, my song Worth with them, yeah, um, it was so interesting to you know, again share a new experience with them and seeing how they approach it. And I'm like, wow, you know, mm. art the craft, the artistry, and you know, the detail that both of them ap approach the production and the songwriting. I'm like, wow. Like there's a lot yeah. of I'm still even learning at this point. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, hundred percent. And um a final question is is there anyone on the Beats with Chef roster that you haven't been able to link with that you're keen to get a track out with? Sire. Mm. Sire for sure. Like Irfan, I've made a song with Irfan, but we haven't we've never dropped it. Mm -hmm. Tiffany made a song with, but yeah, definitely, definitely Sire. Yeah. I've seen some of his new stuff that he's been coming out with. Like it's it's so tough. Not for sure. Shout out to Sire. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, all right, let's keep moving. Number three, what is the first album that you ever bought or received? So the first album I ever bought, it was when I was in year five. Mm -hmm. I was going to school. I came home from school. I used to skateboard, like, back then. And, like, someone posted, like, 
someone that I used to go to the skate park with, they were on a scooter, but they posted like an edit to this song and it was by Cursor. Mm. I was like, bro, like, what's this? I went on my mom, I used to have my mom's iPad and I went on the App Tune store and I searched up Cursor. And like the first thing that came up was his next step album. I just bought the whole album on a card. <laughs> I just bought the whole album and I had it. Like, I, I just listened to that and it was like on repeat because like I didn't know any other rap music really. For sure. For sure. Um, do you, what was the name of the song again? I, you, you next know, Step. Next and Step. And that was the whole album, but that was like, yeah. No, for sure. My favorite song out of it was Next Step. 100%, 100%. And, you know, it's so interesting, the the journey of an artist like Cursor, who, you mm. know, someone like me, who was a bit of a, you know, I'll, I'll admit it, a snob when it came to yeah. hip hop. And, yeah. um, you know, especially Aussie hip hop. Mm. Um, to look down on someone that's literally from our own city. I'm yeah. also from Campbelltown. Oh, and, no way. And, you know, but be like, nah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hoods. Listen, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. Right. that's, but now at the place where I am, where I'm, you know, pardon the pun, but a little more cultured um, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> you know, um, can appreciate the, um, the artistry and the approach of an artist like Cursor. It's, it's, so interesting and you know i'm sure you know that was such an interesting find for you as well yeah right? it was um was there anything in particular about cursor that really drew you to um you know not even just the song but that album in general it was just the aussie accent like i never heard it like that was the first aussie rap i ever heard of and the first aussie rap song i ever heard was next step by cursor and like i was just like it was always just like i had that one that whole album but i always just played that one song and then mm -hmm. like later on like maybe like couple months later start finding out nwa or them yeah no for sure for sure um it always you gotta start somewhere and then it just yeah 100 like, 100 right. and um finally with this question is there an artist or a song that you have been rinsing right now that's in the scene rinsing Irfan's new song he's got a new song love to leave mm -hmm. like i had that before it came out <laughs> and bro like i've been pumping it like i was pumping it today at the beach like so yeah. far True, true. Make sure you go check out that. Yeah, stream that, stream it. 100%. And shout out to Irfan as well. Mm. Amazing artist. Um, okay, number four. What is a moment from one of your favorite gigs and sessions? Bodega Pass the mic, definitely. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know if you saw my my performance there. I don't think so. I was very yeah. in and out <laughs> that evening. Yeah, yeah. So basically, like, my friend Vili was, he got picked for Bodega Pass the mic. Yeah. And like, I was, I didn't get picked. So I went there with Vili. I'm watching him do like the sound check and I see Peter. I'm like, bro, like, do you reckon I can like do a song? Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, of course. I was like, fuck, bro. I was like, I was jumping up and down. Like, and then, so I did my, my set came on. I did like halfway through the song before, before I performed, I was planning to get up on the rail, like mm -hmm. at the end of my song and like have the mic on the rail. Yeah. And then like, I ended up pulling through with it and like, it was fire seeing the whole crowd, like go off. There was a guy behind me, like in the video, like dancing around, like it was fire. That's dirt. That's dirt. Um, how was the, oh, I mean, I, I was there, for, well, just for, for a part of it, but um, for your performance, how was the energy of the crowd and just, you know, everything? Yeah, like, it, it, it's the first time I felt like a crowd was like, they were there to listen to rap and they were actually listening, you know what I mean? Like, I've done a lot of shows, it's like the crowd's there, but they're not there type thing. Definitely. Like, definitely. that was definitely a good one. And like, I ended up giving my business card to Hayden Wing and he yeah. he 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 posted me on Take Flight, but I seen Take Flight posting me, like mentioned in the story. I'm like, oh, maybe he just reposted my performance. Yeah. It was like him giving me a big shout out, but well, I was so gassed. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And shout out to, shout out to Wings, but- Yeah, shout know, out to Take shout Flight. To, um, shout out to Bodega as well, you know. For yeah, putting, thanks. Putting on um uh, events like Pass the Mic and, you mm -hmm. know, um, Peter and all them, they're great guys and, you know, always, always showing love. Always showing love to the scene. Um, and what about a session? Is there a session that's one of your favorites or something that stands out? Probably my first ever studio session was my favorite. Back mm -hmm. in the old studio, they, when they had it at their apartment, like that was that was my favorite session. Just like hearing my first proper made song, like on the drive home, like it was crazy. Mm -hmm. No, for sure, for sure. And, you know, there's there's nothing better. Yeah, like you said, there's nothing better than when you're listening back to what you just made, especially the mm -hmm. last first time doing it and you're like wow like yeah i really wrote i really wrote that i really recorded yeah it facts it's it's on a it's in a form it's something yeah. you can look back in the past and be like i did that yeah no for sure for sure fire fire um okay and number five what is something that represents your dreams and aspirations within your field well like i definitely i definitely like aspired like seeing hefts come up 
mm-hmm. like pulling in Hef's come on that that gave me a lot of inspiration but before then like his first his first show I seen for the culture that was in I think 2018 in St James mm-hmm. I remember I I went there to watch that and like I wasn't really wanted to be a rapper at the time mm-hmm. like it's definitely something I can definitely admire like look at where he's at now like he's going to like like Greece yeah. and shit like performing like it's crazy and he's from like not close to me like hour and a half but like it's definitely it's, it's around me you know 100%, 100%. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely. And, you know, again, you know, uh, even you said Greece, like I think there was one for Dubai. I think he he shot a video in Dubai as well. Oh, no. oh yeah, no way. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, uh, you know, Hef's trajectory from, you mm-hmm. know, started to, you know, how heralded he is in the scene you know, put, put all the whatever beefs or whatever BS, you know, yes, his, his career to the side, um, just his artistry mm-hmm. or how he's approached, you know, interesting, uh, uh, you know, staying interesting, whether or not, you know, someone enjoys it or isn't the biggest fan of it is still something to be like, wow, you know, it's clear that you, you know, how to, you know, get your fans engaged yeah you know stay relevant and especially all like the party music you know rapping over like party beats like it's been done but like i feel like he really you know he popped it off for sure for sure for sure um yeah cool and you know that's definitely someone to you know keep in the back of your mind as you you Mm -hmm. know continue your career Um, yeah yeah definitely definitely hopefully one day you get to work with him one day 100 100 percent. um all right we got one more question but before we get out of here um, yeah. I'll play a game, this very specific game. Um, so what I'm going to get you to do is build your ultimate collab track. Yeah, so it's I was going- expecting this question. I always see it on your Instagram. I was waiting for it. <laughs> I love this game. I love this game so much because, you know, um, I don't need to go into it. <laughs> I know why I love the game. Um, but anyway, so you're going to build your ultimate collab track. Yeah. It's going to be you, three other artists, you're going to choose a producer and a videographer slash director and it's okay. all local. Yeah. So like everyone that I'm picking is local type thing. Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. I mean, local as in like Australia, not just. Yeah. 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 No, a hundred percent. So I get Ace Mana. That's my, that's my like very close mate. He's from my area. He's in mm-hmm. at the moment, but he'll be out soon. Okay. Ace Mana, Vili Season and Irfan. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what was it? Producer too? Yeah, a producer and a videographer director. Okay, local producer. I'd have to go with Beats of Chef. Yep, of course. Standard, standard. Okay. And then video director, definitely Dom C. Ben. Mm, okay. Dom C. Ben for, for videography. Nice. That's my okay. guy too. Shout out to Dom. I love dope. Dom. Dope, dope. And um, what, uh, what would be happening in this video? I feel like, I feel like the artists that I picked is very like, so different like all every everyone's from different types of walks of life like it's it's very different so i don't know the video i feel like something like goes normal into some more street type of stuff like that villi and Irfan coming down here and then like me and ace like coming in like it'll be fire nice nice okay well let's see if that happens let's see if yeah happens. hopefully hopefully for sure for sure um all right we got one more question before we get out of here um, so what is a personal moment that stands out to you that has impacted your music in a certain way? Personal moment. Oh, definitely like my very close mate going to rehab mm-hmm. really like opened my eyes to a lot of shit. Like, but yeah, that definitely changed the change, changed a lot for me. Like seeing like what drugs can do to you, like, yeah. like it's done it to done it to heaps of people around me, done it to myself, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not, it's not good. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you feel like it gave you, like, uh, I mean, it's kind of implied, but, like, a bit of a wake up to be like, look, if I want to take this stuff seriously, then, you uh-huh. know, I've got to stay away or, you know, help my friends be like. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, like, know. you see, like, you see young, like, drugs and you say, oh, it ruins your life. You don't believe it, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, yeah, the adults talking. And then, like, it happens soon, you're like, fuck. Mm-hmm. And you re- they like it just gets to a point where you just realize and it's like fuck like I gotta stop but I gotta change like something has gotta change for sure for sure and you know mm-hmm. um and I voice it in my music too so it's not like a secret like oh my god fortunes dumb drugs you know what I mean like it's not a secret like I'll I'll voice it yeah no hundred percent hundred percent and it's an important message to have in your hundred percent hundred percent 
Um, especially if, you know, you got people looking up to you or family mm -hmm. members, friends who are like, yo, I love your art and, you know, hearing your journey um, or, you know, anyone else in the future who might listen to your your music. Because you never know, um, you know, that one person who might be going through it, hears your music. And, you know, that's yeah. why, again, I appreciate artists like the Curses and the Hefts uh, who yeah. might talk about some real stuff mm -hmm. and, and have that one fan that's like, wow, that that really stood out. So, yeah, yeah no, I I... I love that. I love that. Um, you know, it's very, very important to to have in a, I think a really inspiring place to uh, yeah. end off um, <laughs> this, this interview here. Yeah. Um, thank you once again. Uh, no, thank you too. Of course. Of course. So here is where I uh, roll out the red carpet for you. So then you can let the people know uh, what is out, what might be coming up. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. So I've got 24 bands out now. Mm-hmm. Coming up, Zoo, music video for Zoo. Mm -hmm. That'll be out when this is this is out, right? Yep. So go, go stream that. Me and Tiffany's song, go stream that. Mm -hmm. After Zoo and that, I'm probably going to have a one-month break like mm -hmm. from like dropping, but I've got a Hood Bars episode dropping in right. October. Right. And yeah, that, that's that's about it. Dope. Dope. Thank you, man. No, for sure. For sure. Um, yeah. Thank you once again. Um uh, I'll make sure to be make sure to be tapped in. Make sure if you're watching, you you tap into Fortune, and yeah, um, I am Root, aka the Culture Black Kid. Once again, Fortune, and I'll catch you next time. Peace. Thanks.